sort of theoretical abstract things that that you you look at. It's not that it's hard, or it's not that it's uh, you know you're given questions with a million steps to them, but it's just making the connection between how you can write a number with a fractional exponent and what that means in terms of using a radical sign, a root sign. So we're going to start by just trying a couple numbers on the calculator, and then we'll see. Okay. So let's try something like um, so just to try something, let's try we we want to try making a connection between fractional exponents and radicals. Or again, that's what I would like you to make the connection between. So we're gonna try making the connection between uh, something. We need an expression to start with here. Let's try one that I know is hopefully gonna work here. Not that. Um, let's say we want to do 8 to the power of 2 thirds. 8 to the power of 2 thirds. 8 to the power of 2 thirds. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you that that is the same as the cube root of 8 squared. And it's also the same as the cube root of 8 squared. You notice I said the same thing there? I, I said the same thing when I said the cube root of 8 squared. Cube root of 8 squared, or cube root of 8 squared. It means the same thing. That Those are going to be equivalent to each other, but they're also going to be equivalent to this. Let's try it on the calculator. The thing you have to know with the calculator is, depending on what calculator you're using, if I use this calculator, this is going to turn out to be, it's going to work without knowing how to, knowing, without making mistakes on how we enter it here. Because this one, when I do, when I do 8 to the power of, on this one, right, if I go uh, 8 to the power of 2 thirds, you can just go 2 divided by 3. There's my fraction, 8 to the power of 2 thirds, gives me 4. If I do 8 to the power of 1 third, while we're at it here, one third. Eight to the power of one third is two. Eight to the power of two thirds is four. What do you think eight to the power of three thirds would be? What's eight to the power of three thirds? Yeah, why is it going to be eight? Three thirds is one. Eight to the power of one, right? So we, if you look at patterns there, okay. If you look at that pattern, we can start to figure out why these are equal. These are equal, but we want to see why those are equal. If you have if you have 8 to the 1 third, do you remember what it was on the calculator? What was it? What was 8 to the power of 1 third there? 8 to the power of 1 third was 2. What does that mean? Do you remember? You've looked at what the power of 1 third means. Raising something to the power of 1 third, what is that the same as writing? 8 to the power of 1 third is the same, same as saying cube root of 8. 8 to the power of 1 third is cube root of 8. What did the calculator say 8 to the 2 thirds was? What's 8 to the 2 thirds? It was 4, right? What did, it, what did we say 8 to the 3 thirds was? What's 8 to the 3 thirds? Remember, you said it a minute ago, right? What's 8 to the 3 thirds? 8 to the 1? It's just 8. If we keep going with that pattern, what if I, What do you think 8 to the 4 thirds would be? 8 to the power of 4 thirds? If you look at the pattern, we got 2, 4, 8. What's it going to be? 16. What's 8 to the 5 thirds going to be? It's going to be 32, 8 to the power of 6 thirds. 8 to the power of 6 thirds, what should it be? It should be 64 for a couple of reasons. It should be 64 because it's following the pattern, but it should also be 64 because 8 to the 6 thirds, what's 6 thirds the same as? 2, right? 8 squared is 64. So we've got to make some connection between these things, okay? You have seen before, hopefully you remember that 
Raising something to the power of one third is the same as saying cube root of that number. Raising something to the to the like n to the uh, oops n to the power of say one quarter is the same as the fourth root of n. n to the power of one seventh is the same as the seventh root of that number. We've seen that before. You did an in investigation where you hopefully noticed that. If you followed the pattern over here at the right here, we got to add the other ones here. 8 to the 4 thirds was 16. 8 to the 5 thirds was, what was 8 to the 5 thirds again? 32. 8 to the 6 thirds was the same as 8 squared, which was 64. So we have to be able to make the connection between those things. Okay, this is, this is, uh, this is, it's difficult, right, to, to connect why this works other than the fact that we saw it on our calculator. All right. Um, I'm going to show you for the one that's up at the top here. Eight to the two-thirds is the same as that, or it could work for any single one here. Um, but we'll start with the one that was at the top of the page there that said eight to the two-thirds was four. Eight to the two-thirds is four. Four is the same as uh, the, the well. Four is the same as a lot of things, right? But um, eight here, if you you know that when you have two powers that are, if you have a power of a power, like if I have a to the power of two to the power of three, what's what's another way I can write that? A to the power of two to the power of three. How can you write that? A to the six, right? A to the power of six. You multiply those two. You could write eight to the one third to the two, right? Because what's one third times two? Two times one third is two thirds, right? So that's kind of the key there is you can write that like that. You can write eight to the eight to the two thirds. You can write it as eight to the one third to the two. Eight to the one third in the brackets there is the same as the cube root of eight. And then we have the two outside there. That's how you can make the connection between the two there. Cube root of 8 squared. 8 to the 2 thirds is the same as cube root of 8 squared. Okay? Or we could have done it like this. You could have also written it as, instead, when you start with 8 to the 2 thirds, you could have written it as 8 squared to the 1 third. You could have put in the 1 third outside there. It doesn't matter which way you put that. 2 times 1 third doesn't matter. So you could say it's the cube root of 8 squared and the squared is inside there. You can either have the squared outside or inside. It can be the whole thing squared afterwards or it can be squared inside. Okay? If you want to write any one of those other ones that's up there on the list. I think we had 8 to the 5 thirds was um, it was 32 the way you can kind of show that is you can say um, on the left side here, five thirds, you can write it as eight to the one third to the five. Eight to the one third is the same again as cube root of eight. Cube root, what is cube root of eight? What is the cube root of eight? Cube root of eight, this would be one that would be worth knowing, right? Perfect cubes. Eight's a perfect cube. What's its cube root? Two, right? You built little blocks, remember? You built little cubes out of those smaller cubes. If you had one that was eight, it's a perfect cube. Its side length is two. Two to the fifth, 32. That's how you can show that that's equal. Eight to the five thirds, you can actually work out without a calculator as long as you know that to the power of one third is the cube root. As long as you know that that is equal to that. And then that's equal to that. The thing you need to know is how to convert fractional powers to radicals, okay? So let's just make one up down here that has random numbers involved. Um, somebody give me a one-digit number other than one, other than two, six. The sixth root of, give me another one-digit number, seven to the no, six root, cube root of Six, seven, eight. Okay, there we go. If we want to write that as a power, how can you write that as a power? 
you can kind of go one step at a time. You can make the sixth root thing. You can make the sixth root piece here into something else. The sixth root you can write as to the power of what? What can you make this sixth root? This part of it? Sixth root, that operation, you can write it as a power. How can you write that as a power? To the power of one-sixth. Right? The sixth root of something is the same as that to the one-sixth. If you write that to the power of one-sixth, and then you have that rule that says a number of power of a power here, what can you do with those two things? Seven to the power of What can you do? To the power of 8 to the power of 1 sixth. Power of a power, you can multiply those two. 8 sixth. 7 to the 8 sixth. This original thing here, this power. Okay, we'll rewrite it down at the bottom here. Sixth root of 7 to the 8 is the same as 7 to the power of 8 sixth. We need to write a rule in general with variables here, not with numbers. A to the power of B over C. What is that the same as? How can you write that as a radical? So we'll put the root sign there. Where does the A, B, and C go? Well, up here you had... That thing's the the base of that power, right? It's the base over here as well. Where does the B and the C go? Where does the top number in this fraction, what is that? That's the power on A here, right? And where does the where does this other one go here? Where does this go? This is the index of this radical. Okay, the word index means what root you're taking. The index of the radical, that number is called the index. This thing's the index of the radical. That's a rule that you can find written in that section at some point. But you have to be able to switch between powers that involve fractional exponents and how to write them as radicals. Okay, So make sure you take a few minutes and you're able to do that one way or the other. It just requires writing it one way or the other. Try. Make sure you understand it. You can you can take the several step approach if you want to convert between those two things. Like if you'd rather write A to the B to the 1 over C instead of B over C and then turn the 1 over C into that root where the index is C. Don't sit right now. You sit and stare at this, and you say it's. Well, I don't even. I mean, it's all this fractional exponents, radicals, all this stuff. You'll get it if you take a few minutes with it. Okay. Can you get going on finishing that section? Don't work on other stuff right now. Work on this section so that you can nail down this stuff. The problem, I think, for some of you is you always go back to kind of the last place in your in your booklet where you were working. Don't go back to the last place you're working. Work on this. It doesn't matter if there's a blank spot in the middle of the book and you're working on section four right now. Work on the one we talked about today so that you can, you know, you can have the benefit of having looked at that today. Then go back and do those other things. All right?